Hi, I'm Colin Klupik, and welcome to this video series where we talk to Dr. Martha Burns about the latest from the field of neuroscience and what it has to say about learning. In this video, we talk about auditory processing disorder and dyslexia. Well, two very new studies just came out. One was published by a gentleman whose name is Bart Boats, B-O-E-T-S, um, and his colleagues looking at identifying auditory processing disorders in children who are entering kindy, um, the first early school years, and then following them and seeing what kinds of learning issues result over time. So it was a longitudinal study, very interesting one. And he found that when children have auditory processing disorders in kindergarten, by the time they're in the third grade, they're very likely to be diagnosed as dyslexic. So I'd say the new research is pointing um, to the fact that auditory processing disorders are a, a significant contributor to some of the learning problems that we see in a lot of children in school. And another group of researchers, Terry Bellis, just published an article in uh, the Journal of the American Speech and Hearing Association um, just again this year, both of these within the last couple of months looking at the relationship between auditory processing disorders and reading disorders as well and found that very similar that children if you do it the other way if you look at children who are um, having reading problems and you test their auditory processing you can see um, several different dimensions of auditory processing that seem to be um, problematic in those children so if two lines of research that are culminating um, that are supporting research that had been going on probably for 10 or 15 years um, on the link between learning problems and auditory processing disorders. Yes, because what that means is that auditory processing disorders are treatable. So there are several interventions that you can use. A classic intervention for auditory processing disorders is called auditory training, where you actually sit with a child and ask them to do speech discrimination tasks, but we also have uh, commercial products out there like the Fast for Word programs that are designed specifically to train auditory processing disorders. And so what that means is that we can probably tackle a lot of learning difficulties by identifying auditory processing disorders in children as young as we can, six or seven years of age is right now about the youngest age, but then treating them right away so that you so a child never gets to school and has to start struggling with the academic process. I think that we could probably talk about dyslexias. There are probably different kinds of dyslexia. That is, there are different causes, and so they present themselves a little differently. So dyslexia is a broad term that's, that we apply to children who are significantly below grade level in reading and really struggling with reading. Usually the criteria is around the lowest decile um, in, in reading. But there are some children, there's a wonderful book that's been written, Reading in the Brain, um, by Stanislaus Dehen, who's a neuroscientist who's been studying reading. And he talks about the fact that a child can have trouble learning to read because they have trouble dealing with the letters. They have trouble um, perceiving the letters and perceiving the orientation of letters. But a larger group of children have problems learning to read because they either have auditory processing disorders, as we've discussed, or they have language disorders. So that converting the written symbol into a word isn't as difficult for them sometimes as figuring out what that word means or what the grammatical forms of the sentence mean when they read it. So reading is complicated. It uses almost the entire left hemisphere of the brain, and there are different problems that can lead to reading disorders. Well, I like to say <laughs> um, that dyslexia isn't a disease. So we talk about cures for diseases. Dyslexia is a learning difference. It's, it's, it involves children who are um, not as good with auditory processing, let's say, or who are having some problems with language and, and learning the language system. And so because they're having problems with learning, I don't think of it as a disease. And I don't, if you don't have a disease, you're not looking for a cure. You're actually looking for interventions to help the child to overcome or to, um, to 
bypass some of the difficulties or obstacles they have in the reading process, and also to augment the systems that are weak. Sure. Well, a famous example that a lot of people know is um, Charles Schwab, Chuck Schwab. And he gives talks on how he was dyslexic and how difficult that was for him. And as you know, he's a major CEO of one of the, um, of the best investing, online investing, or biggest investing, online investing corporations in the world. M I have a daughter who was diagnosed with dyslexia when she was in year three. And she's now vice president of a small corporation in New York City and doing remarkably well. And she reads very well. Um, and uh, manages her life beautifully. So if we think of dyslexia more in terms of a, a learning difference and think about in ways to intervene so that we can get to children early and give them alternate ways or improve some of the deficits that are leading to this, the dyslexia, there's no reason that every child can't succeed, be a successful reader and learner. Probably so, and it might be a barrier in terms of getting the best help. So if we think of, of a learning difference as a disease, if we use what's sometimes called the medical model, then there's a tendency to look for cures. And if you're looking for cures, you tend to look in directions of medication, or you tend to do research that's designed in random controlled trials the way you test a drug. So we'll take 10 people with this disorder and we'll give them this, treatment and we'll take 10 people with this disorder and we'll give them something else. And, and in reality, working with an individual who has a learning difference involves a lot of variables. The variable of the relationship between the teacher or the clinician or the therapist and the, and the individual, choosing the right interventions at the right time, and then tailoring in the, the interventions to the individual needs of the child. And when that's done well, um, children are very successful. And the other problem I would say with the disease analogy is, is then we tend to look at someone as having, having a problem that, that is a little scary. Or, or they may f have a self-image of themselves as having something wrong with them. And when you think, on the other hand, that really what dyslexia is, or many learning disabilities, are learning differences, where the brain is good at some things, but it just doesn't happen to be good at reading, then the person starts to realize that they have a lot of strengths, and that really it's just a matter of tackling a few difficult areas for them, and they can overcome that, and then they can uh, do as well in school as anyone else. So their self-image changes when you stop using a disease analogy, I think. Thank you.